This episode of Keys to the Shop is brought to you by Prima Coffee. Whether it's espresso machines, manual brewing devices, or general coffee shop needs, they seek to pursue the most innovative coffee products, both domestic and abroad, to offer their customers. Find out more at prima-coffee.com. This is Keys to the Shop, Founder Friday edition. Today, we're talking with Christian Hedborg, the founder of Café Alchemisten in Gothenburg, Sweden. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DeFirio. I'm your host for the show. And this is a Founder Friday episode today, uh, where at the end of every month, the last Friday of every month, we talk with a founder, entrepreneur, somebody who started a coffee business, a coffee shop business, and uh, hear from them about the ups and downs of their journey, what brought them into coffee, what have they learned, and we get to benefit from their wisdom uh, by hearing that story. And so today we get to talk with Christian Hedborg, of Cafe El Shemisten in Sweden. And I think you're really going to like this one today. I do want to thank our sponsor, Keys to the Shop, and that is Prima Coffee. Uh, Prima Coffee is a specialty coffee equipment supplier based out of Louisville, Kentucky. Now, uh, from the beginning of their business, they've set out to make the best coffee brewing equipment available to the general public. And their focus is on curating the best equipment for every need from grinders to espresso machines, undercounter refrigeration, whether you need commercial equipment or home equipment, they have it at prima-coffee.com where you will find all of what they have to offer as well as the resources that they um, come up with, the blog posts, the videos, the studies they do on the equipment that they have. They truly do curate what they bring in and they have a lot of expertise when it comes to it. They put a real big emphasis, in fact, on having the expertise to help their customers get the right gear to fit every situation. And I definitely trust them with that. They know what they're doing. And I think you would be really happy working with Prima Coffee. So go to prima-coffee.com, reach out to them, see what they can do for you and your company. And my thanks to Prima for their support of Keys to the Shop and also their support of our industry by helping us with the tools we need to do our jobs well. I also want to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who has participated in the survey that is available. The link is available in the show notes here on iTunes as well as in the profile on our Instagram page at Keys to the Shop. And uh, if you haven't already participated in that survey, um, it literally takes uh, down to like 0.004 minutes to complete. And it means the world to me. Thank you so much to those of you who have already filled it out. I'm uh, really thrilled to hear some feedback and get to know y'all a little bit more and and what we can do to make this show better for you uh, year after year. So today, Founder Friday, we're talking with Christian Hedborg, and we're talking uh, about him opening his shop, Café El Shemisten, in Gothenburg, Sweden. It's a three-year-old store, uh, and Christian is 27 years old, but he got into coffee shortly after, or actually during the time when he was studying restaurant management. He owned his first coffee shop with some others back when he was just 22, and from there went to open uh, Café El Shemisten, and things have just been really looking up for uh, what he's doing there. There's a great food program, music, uh, high quality, you know, 90 plus coffee, really cool stuff going on. And Christian is at the helm of this. He's also the owner, uh, co-owner actually, of a restaurant called Anti Barbarus in Gothenburg, along with um, one of the regulars, actually, at uh, Cafe El Chemisten. So restaurant owner, uh, cafe owner, we stick to uh, the coffee shop in this conversation, but what he has to share, uh, his story coming into coffee, becoming a coffee bar owner and starting his own business and the the highs and lows in that process and how he went about finding staff, what he does to both lead the staff and also maintain this vibe, this feel of community that uh, is just loved by everybody from the staff to the customers. Um, We talk about that 
as well as a bunch of other stuff that I think, especially those of us who are going to want to open our own coffee bars one day, are, are going to benefit from. And of course, that's the purpose of these uh, episodes at Founder Friday is to uh, give us inspiration and tools and value that'll help you in your endeavors. Uh, even if you're a current owner, we always can learn from others in our industry. So with that, let's get to our conversation today with the founder of Cafe El Chimisten, Christian Hedborg. All right, Christian, welcome to Keys to the Shop. Really glad to have you on. Thank you so much. It feels, uh, it feels, how does it feel? It feels very good to be, uh, to be talking with you uh, and uh, being on the show. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, discover uh, the story behind your cafe and your story. Um, you are owner of a coffee shop in Gothenburg, Sweden. And yeah. you uh, started, did you start out as a, uh, just a coffee geek? And how, well, how did you get started into coffee and then find yourself as a cafe or owner? What's the backstory with that? So um, I studied uh, restaurant management uh, uh, in the university. Um, I got a bachelor degree there, and during that time I, I got uh, into to wine. So, um, like learning about wine, tasting, you know, exploring all the taste that uh, comes with the wine. Um, but I, I didn't get a job in the wine industry. I got a job like a salesman for for coffee beans. Oh, so, wow. yeah, I, I started to sell Italian espresso beans, 70% Robusta, 30% uh, Arabica. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was how I started in, in the industry with coffee. Not, I didn't start off with specialty coffee. <laughs> oh, okay, so I mean, but that, drew, that drew you into coffee a little bit. Yeah, I got really interested and I, I, I saw it like uh, even the Italian coffee that you could uh, find uh, many different tastes and uh, uh, yeah, that interested me a lot. And I also started to work as a barista in an Italian uh, coffee shop where, yeah, you know, you drink espresso on your feet and you go out and you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no to-go cups, just ceramic. Yeah, yeah exactly. So One from euro. there, you, you, you obviously uh, kind of went down the rabbit hole with coffee um, what was your first introduction into like higher end specialty coffee, I would say, um, and you know, the, the road to becoming a cafe owner, was that happening pretty soon after you started to get into coffee? So with, with the coffee and with my uh, education that I, I, I started to work with coffee during my education to become a, like a restaurant manager and, um, I got the chance in the coffee shop that I was working at to become an owner. So, so I bought shares there. I was 22 years old at that time, uh, and uh, became a coffee shop owner. You know, I, and it, that was a dream for me to 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 run my, to run my own place. Um, but that was still working with Italian coffee, and uh, it was more experience for me to be like an owner. And to run a place. Nice. So it gave you, it got your feet wet with operations in the cafe and things like that. And eventually you, you uh, separated from there and went on to do your own thing. Yeah. So I was there uh, and um, some stuff happened and uh, I, I, I quit that uh, with working with, uh, it's a long story. It was like a legal uh, process. Uh, that uh, got me out from the cafe, but uh, that opened my eyes for to do my own thing. So I first got into specialty coffee when I opened uh, my first uh, own coffee shop called Alchemisten, and uh, so and I I started to work with specialty coffee then, <laughs> and so I I didn't actually have any teacher or anyone to tell me. Uh, how things works with it, uh, uh, but I did it anyway, and it uh, went <laughs> good. Good, and that's your. Uh, how long has it been open? So in March we will be three years. Nice, congrats. <laughs> we yeah yeah, it's a uh, time passed by quick. It's been a really really good journey. 
So what is the concept of, of the cafe? Um, Alchemisten is uh, Swedish for what? Alchemisten is the Swedish, uh, in English, it's uh, the alchemist. So alchemy, alchemy you know, you prove you you um, make gold from uh, some from stones or you you uh, you make something better than it is okay. so uh, we think of like uh, we take uh, the coffee beans and produce great coffee drinks uh, or we bake uh, really good uh, pastries with uh, different types of uh, uh, of food yeah there's some personal meaning there too though isn't there uh, yeah, so um, it's from the name uh, I got from the book by Paolo Coelho. So the first coffee shop I was owner at, it was a really tough time for me how I got separated from there uh, with the legal process and everything. And then me trying to figure out what to do and then finally figuring out what to do. Uh, and at that same time, I was reading the book, uh, The Alchemist. And it's about uh, following your dreams and not giving up, even if it's uh, if you have a hard time. Just uh, if you really want something, the whole universe will serve you to get it. So for me, it was uh, a very strong, um, strong feeling when I when I realized that yeah, that's that's the name for the place. Great. So congrats. You're just making good on that, uh, that inspiration and following your dreams and achieving your goals. What, uh, what is the, um, ethos behind your cafe? Like what is, uh, Alchemisten all about? Alchemisten is, um, when we talk about it, uh, with the staff and, uh, in our circle, we usually talk about uh, that we are three different pillars. So the first one is the coffee. So we really, try to do everything we can to uh, have the highest quality of coffee we can have and to always uh, improve our skills in making good coffee and, uh, you know, teaching people about coffee and what it's about. Um, so that, that you could say that coffee is the core that drives us in, uh, in the business. Then we have another pillar, which is uh, culture. And um, that you could say is um, the soul of the company. So uh, we have a lot of live concerts, uh, music, uh, and uh, you know, just trying to be this meeting place for everyone, regardless of where you're from. Just come and hang out, and you know, be in this vibe. And then the third pillar is the service, like uh, how we work with hospitality. Uh, and uh, how important it is for us. So around these three pillars, uh, we work. And um, yeah, like we, we are on a mission to serve people. Uh, and we do what we do to bring happiness to other people and uh, create this strong community and make, uh, yeah, like in the end of the day, we just want to make the world a better place. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I want to dive into that a little bit more here soon, but getting getting that um, idea first on paper and then into reality, there's this big gap between the two of them. Uh, realizing your dreams can sometimes be a, a hard slogging road. What was the process like of actually going out and you know finding a space and starting this company? Describe that process to us. Yeah, so for me, the first... Uh how I did it this time, I don't think I will do exactly. Uh, I didn't do it I, because I also opened a restaurant. I didn't do it the same time then. And I think every time I will improve my way of doing it. Uh, but this is the first time it was um, first I got the location. So I had some contacts with uh, landlords here in Gothenburg. Um, this uh, place is, uh, they are building a new area like uh, from scratch. It was a location free there and I took it and um, that was the first step. Um, and from there, it's just like committing to do this, to, you know, have all these ideas in your head, to have all this um, thought process on how you would like this place to be in reality and just starting to uh, make it true. And that's like, uh, for me, it was a lot of 
checklist, you know, checking things. So I just, uh, yeah, just worked a lot with uh, doing a lot of different things. <laughs> Every, everything from choosing what tiles you should have on the on the floor to what, how the logo should look like, the website, staff, everything. And uh, it was um, a lot of uh, like brainstorming, visualis- visualization. After that, it was to put all this idea into a business plan and like financial projection and uh, putting the ideas into a paper to make it more real. And uh, yeah, I think for me, one thing that was really important was to work a lot with the financial plan to like translating all these goals I had to specific targets and uh, creating tools for me, how, how, how I would run the business, anticipating problems and planning for worst case scenarios and so on. Is that and, a strength uh, of yours, that, that um, financial planning, or are you more uh, the creative type? I think I, those are two of my strong sides. Oh, wow. So I, I, I really like the creative part, you know. During this time, I was like 24-7 just thinking about everything, every aspect of uh, the business and uh, how, how, I, how I would do it. Um, I think my friends got really sick of me because I always asked them, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? <laughs> what about this name for, for the shop? And yeah, uh, so the creative part, I, I really think I, it's a strong side for me. And also the financial part, I think it's, uh, it's fun. You know, I, I like planning to, and also for me to feel secure, you know, put a lot of time into making it good. So I know what I can expect. Mm-hmm. And also know that even if I reach a bad scenario, I, I have a plan how to handle it. And that also uh, made it possible for me to get a loan. Maybe it was in the wrong way because I did all this work. I didn't have the cash to, you know, uh, finance everything. So I, I signed a contract for a location before I even knew if I could afford. <laughs> but the, the, the financial plan helped me. So, yeah. That's excellent. Hey, so many uh, stories about entrepreneurship that you read are heavy on the idea that you have to take a lot of risks. But it sounds like f- from talking to a lot of folks, and, and yourself included, there's a lot of mm. planning that goes in to mitigate those risks. Yeah, I, I think the planning is uh, is key to succeed. And uh, you should put a lot, a lot, a lot of time into just um planning every detail you know and it's all about details you know just going deep into every aspect and find out what you need for this to work um because when you open the doors you are if you don't have a strong plan you're you're screwed you know <laughs> you can't uh, you can't you wouldn't you would not be able to run the business so in the midst of all of this you know planning very well having great creative ideas um, there have to have been some moments where there are some challenges that were a little surprising. You know, this is the first time that you've struck out on your own opening a, a coffee bar. Mm. Describe to us a little bit about, you know, some of the things that were particularly challenging for you. So one thing I think is that uh, to have all these different aspects, to have control of them because there are so many and you are responsible for every single one of them. That was um, uh, really challenging to make that work. Um, and also, since this was the first time I, I did anything like this, just it felt like I did everything for the first time. So I had to learn how to do it. You know, I had to, for example, the, the carpenters building the place, the location with the interior and everything. I had to be the one that uh, to go there and, you know, control that they did their job. And I don't even know <laughs> what uh, what is right and wrong. You know, <laughs> I have no idea. I can't, uh, you know, I'm not a carpenter. Far from that. But I, I had to be there and check, okay, how are you doing? Okay. And um, that was, uh, it was hard doing everything for the first time and figure out how to do it. I mean, what drove you to just embrace that uh, outside of just the fact that you needed to, which, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. There's probably a lot of insecurity that comes with that if you're walking into the building knowing that you're going to talk to somebody who's an expert in carpentry and 
you have to critique their work. You know, for you as a young cafe mm-hmm. owner, how did you get into the mindset that, you know, not only is this necessary, but I can do it? I think the, I was so obsessed with, uh, you know, uh, making this really good because I, I came from, uh, from hardship and, uh, I saw this as a way out and I was so passionate about, you know, making it good uh, that um, I just uh, told myself, like, you, you just, you need to do, you, you do what you need to do. And uh, that was how I did it. And maybe, for example, with the carpenters, that was uh, very tough sometimes. But uh, yeah, I, I went in with a strong sense. Uh, when I I was going to talk with them and I played a little theater like uh, that if I like like I knew what it, <laughs> what it was about yeah act as if yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but in the end it was it's worth it even if it was awkward right yeah you know it was uh, and even if it was awkward afterwards next time I would do it better so mm. I see everything like uh, like learnings you know it's uh, and I also I opened on a restaurant after this, and uh, I I I see how everything I did with uh, with Alchemist then served me to open the other place. So n- nothing is in vain, you know. You learn. Great. Uh, what was the name of your restaurant? Anti Barbarus. Okay, nice. And uh, I assume that's going well as well. Yeah, it's it's going it's going well. So when you're when you're staffing your uh, coffee shop, this is a huge decision. And you and I and anyone who is in specialty coffee has been to a a bar where, you you know, you question whether or not um, there is a really solid hiring process in place just because of maybe service that you receive or, or whatnot. Your dreams are kind of hinged on people representing your values to the public um, how did you go about finding the right people to staff Al Shemistan? So I didn't have any plan, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I, I didn't, uh, if I just look back, if I look at the, uh, the staff now, I'm just, uh, I don't know how everything happened, but it did. And now I just have uh, the best staff I, I, I can ever, could ever imagine. I'm so grateful. Uh, but, um, I think maybe one part of, of, of how it happened is that like me and my sister had, have worked together a lot. So she has always been by my side, uh, from the Italian coffee shop to Algemistan. And it was, uh, we who started to work in the shop and we, we already have a strong sense of how we work, like work ethic, uh, what, how, how the culture is, how we serve people. That was very strong, and uh, I don't know. It just started to attract customers, and then that became regulars, and we became this family. And uh, then you just have uh, one of your regulars working with you, and that's just crazy. But uh, I, don't, I don't know how it happens, but <laughs> it happens so many times. That's like I think we are maybe eight people working right now, and uh, everyone has been a customer before working. <laughs> oh wow. So they bought yeah. into the vision as customers. They just loved the culture and everything else. And, and obviously it makes a great fit for a for a staff member. Yeah. It's like they were hanging out there. So they why don't you could work there and get paid, you know. It, it's not it's not so big a difference between being a customer and working there. Because it's you know, you're hanging around hanging out together. But yeah, um we have I don't know, the best staff in the world. It's crazy. (laughs) Sweet. So as you bring on staff that used to be customers and everyone is buying into this culture and um, there's this family feel to your staff, there are also uh, the needs to hold people accountable and and be a leader. Um, And obviously Mm. people are going to look to you to be a, a leader in the store. How do you go about leadership in an effective way with this, this group of people? One thing that is very important for me and that that has been a strong learning since I opened the place is uh, to know, be very clear about the responsibility everyone has. So even though we are a strong group and like a family, 
we have things we need to do. And uh, what what we done at Alchemisten is that everyone has different responsibilities. You know, we have uh, Natalie. She's in, she's uh, responsible for for staff and schedule, and we have Felicia that is like pastry chef. Anthony is uh, the coffee um, um, coffee man, and everyone has something specific for them to work with. And outside of that, you know, uh, we're clear uh, on what we expect of each other and uh, what we need to do to keep this vibe in the place. And I think uh, that's really important. Just, you know, always communicate on communicate our vision, our mission, what we want. And after that, you know, I, I really like trusting people. If we can communicate how we want the place to be, then how we do it is not as important. I don't care like if you do it uh, one way or another. Is the goal that is important and that we are true to to our to our vision. Well, that's unique because you've got a strong vision that you obsessed about. You annoyed your friends with, and you uh, you, you were just gung ho for this, and it was your dream. And at the yeah. same time, you're giving away authority you're trusting people that's mm. it seems in in one sense contradictory but it, it sounds like the right thing to do i i feel i i feel that it's really the right thing to do um but it hasn't been easy you know i i also have this uh, controlling side of me that i always have to work with to trust people but i know deep in my heart that trusting People is uh, what I should strive for. Um, and uh, I think uh, something that helped me in this was when I opened a restaurant. And I couldn't be at Alchemisten so much as I was before. I, I had to put a lot of time into the restaurant. Then I was forced to delegate. And I was forced to make things work without me being there all the time. Like many people told me that, you know, you have to be there, you have to work, you have to do all these things yourself to keep the vibe, to keep the culture. But what I realized is that it's just being better without me being there uh, in some kind of strange way. Um, yeah. You keep the vibe to yourself in a sense. Like it, there's this idea that is, as you said that, I'm thinking people have this tendency to believe that they are the only ones who can carry a particular vision, but so many people can represent that vision well, and maybe even sometimes better than, than you could. Yeah, that's so true. And you know, I, I, when I opened a restaurant, I had a plan to, after maybe two months, get back to Alchemisten and work there, but I didn't realize how much work it actually took to open a restaurant. So that was not happening. <laughs> so it went like one year passed without me getting back and working in the coffee shop. Uh, but every time I come there and, uh, you know, every time I meet the staff, I'm just so thankful, so happy, you know, because everything is working so good and everyone, you know, the vibe is so high. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's incredible. Like when you trust people, and when you create something together, because that's also, I don't see Alchemisten anymore as, you know, I created Alchemisten, this is my thing. I see it more as um, we do this together and, you know, the staff, the customers, everyone that's involved are co-creators from from now on. And, you know, that's, I like that thought. Oh, man, I, I really love that thought. I've, I've come across that way of thinking a few times and it, it really resonates with, with me. I think it just makes great business sense. And, uh, it's what happens no matter what, actually the co-creation yeah. of the culture of the customer mixing with the staff culture, it, it creates this unique expression. Um, and you know, part of that, and, and this is getting into something that I, I wanted to touch on here is, is already established in Swedish culture. And that's the idea of, uh, Fika. I might not get this correct, so forgive me, but, from my understanding, fika is kind of a traditional coffee 
break that uh, a majority of people recognize as a part of daily life. How does how does that fit into what you do in the shop? So it fits in very good, you know, um, because it's a strong rooted thing we have here in Sweden. You know, you go to a place and you drink coffee and eat something sweet. That's the like the basic thing. That's what you do. Uh, but then there's also this this part where you you socialize with with someone or you you work with your computer you do something uh, and it's this uh, this holy time when you take a break from day to day life and change your environment and just uh, enjoy life and uh, I think uh, when people come to us and do that. Um, I think they they feel happier when they leave uh, because they really they enjoy what they're get, getting. So the community really takes this time really seriously already and are looking for places to um, just take a break from their their work and home and kind of have that third place as as a lot of uh, us call it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, everyone like it's a it's a strong rooted thing, but everyone has their own way of doing it. So some people, they like going alone and they sit and read and uh, or work with their laptop. Um, other people, they they go with their friends and, you know, just sit there and, and talk about something. Um, the, the thing everyone has in common is that it's they know that, OK, now we are now we are doing this Fika thing. So and, and knowing that creates value to the whole whole process of doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it adds motivation to you and your staff to really uh, deliver on people's expectations as well. So are you roasting your own coffee? Are you bringing coffee in? Um, how does your coffee program work? Uh, so we have uh, the honor to work with a really amazing guy called uh, Ivica Svetanovsky. He's, he's our neighbor who lives next door. Uh, and he has a roastery in, uh, in Norway called uh, Kofia Circular and uh, he's amazing guy you know he has a lot of knowledge in coffee and uh, he he sources everything direct from different farms and uh, and uh, you know have this vision to create harmony in the world uh, and that is something that uh, we can relate to at Alchemisten so our relationship is very strong uh, we always have like uh, this communication of of um, what we would like our coffee to be uh, and uh, how we can improve and so on. And uh, he, he make it possible for us to only work with 90 plus coffee. So that is what we serve on espresso, on filter coffee, everything. And uh, mm. you have a great food program. You said you had a pastry chef. Um, is, is that something where you purpose to pair coffees with particular types of pastries, keep it fresh, rotate options? Uh, we are not pairing so much. Uh, actually, we try to sometimes bake with coffee uh, and okay. include that in the pastry, uh, but not so much pairing. Uh, we have a pastry chef, Felicia, that uh, she's an amazing raw food uh, chef. So she is, And she's 20 years old and she's amazing and I don't understand how she could be so good <laughs> uh, but she's come she come in and just you know bake a lot of good stuff mm-hmm. and we also work with a French bakery for normal like croissants and stuff uh, then we have another girl Angelica that works every weekend to make uh, like special weekend lunch so then it's like more food that we serve on Saturday and Sunday yeah, so we make like vegetarian and vegan food, um, fresh soups and salads, and uh, yeah, every every weekend is something new. So your cafe, describe to us the kind of uh, impact that you want to have on your community and the industry. Ideally, you mentioned you know create harmony in the world, and that really resonates with you and what you're doing at El Chimisten. How would you describe the ultimate impact goal that you have for your company? Uh, the ultimate impact goal is to make the world a better place, to share love and to spread the good vibes. Just, you know, um, being this place where people come and uh, 
enjoy themselves uh, by themselves or in the company with someone else. Um, and uh, yeah, we really want to put a lot of uh, effort in making having concerts. Um, we work with a, a charity organization called the Fortress, which is a safe house for pregnant uh, teenagers in Uganda. Uh, so we really like uh, to take our responsibility in the ways we can to make uh, like the world a better place. Mm, making just making good stuff that's what we want to do <laughs> yes. so i'm interested to know um in your experiences what kind of advice would you give to those who are they're wanting to open their own cafes maybe they're young you know it doesn't matter what age i guess if they're opening mm -hmm. their first cafe from all that you've been through and seen what kind of advice would you give to people First of all, I think it's uh, very important to know why you are doing it, uh, like why you're doing it, why you're opening a cafe, um, and if you are ready to put in the work, because it's a lot of work, many hours, and uh, if you don't have this strong why, then you won't be able to motivate yourself during the, the, the hard times when problems pop up all the time. Um, but if you have this strong why, you can always go back to that. And also knowing that, you know, problems will never stop being there. They will always be there. And you just have to be prepared for that. And in some kind of way, learn how to deal with them without uh, breaking yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's also important to take care of yourself. Um, even if you're opening a business, even if you're putting all this time into creating something, you always need to take care of yourself in some kind of way. For me, it's very important to do yoga, to meditate, to keep myself healthy, because that will spread to, to, to your business. Uh, and if you feel bad, that will also spread. Mm, that's true. Um, yeah. You, you need to feel like when you, when you really feel that you want to do it, I think you just do it. Don't think so much. For me, it has always been like I, I take one step. So I make this phone call to see, is this location available? Okay, it is available. Then I make a business plan, put a lot of time into doing that, and I then I send it and see if I get the location. Mm. So always take take the small steps, and then finally you will be there and you will have a cafe. <laughs> take opportunities where you can to just move move forward a little bit at a time yeah right? do something uh, like do something don't just sit there and want it you have to do something so uh to move forward nice turn uh mm. turn stones into gold yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so uh what is next for alchemisten what are you what are you guys up to uh, we just said no to a location uh, that we were planning to opening another another shop because it was not a good timing. Uh, but we we have in our pipeline is to open another shop, and uh, yeah, we really look forward to because now we almost we don't have enough hours, you know, and uh, for for the staff, and it would be so good if we had one more place. Uh, so everyone could work more and uh, so that we can spread the vibe in more places than one and have a bigger impact. So how can we keep in touch? How can we stay up to date with uh, all that? So we use Instagram, Facebook, and we have our webpage, alchemistenkaffebar.se. So it's in Swedish, but you can find it in the Instagram, which is alchemistenkaffe. Nice. And we'll link to that in the show notes here yeah. as well. This has been really great. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate what you've shared. I think it is going to uh, really help a lot of folks. And it's it's really energized me for, for coffee and community as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah. So one thing I know is that the power of story and hearing the story of another with an open mind and an open heart really can transform the way you think about your situation. 
And especially when you get to hear about somebody who is pursuing and realizing their dream, just like Christian is with El Shemisten, um, realizing the dream and attracting people to that uh, community that all kind of have the same value and, and ethos. I love that all of his staff used to be customers. It reminds me of uh, the kind of approach that Joshua Boyd, um, another founder Friday guest from Metronome Coffee in Tacoma, Washington, he uh, was mentioning that that is an approach that he takes as well to staffing his store. So there's something here in the, the buy-in that people have for the vision of your shop if they're regular customers that's really something that you, uh, well, I, I guess you can't buy. <laughs> um, the other thing for me, especially in this talk, was the approach that Christian has to the customers and the staff as co-creators of this concept. Even though it's his dream, the kind of trust that he gives people to run the place and take ownership of the vision and be co-creators of it, that it's not only healthy, it's vital. It's the kind of um, business model that, you know, were I to open a coffee shop, I definitely would seek that perspective. And as he says, it's not something that necessarily is without its challenges. If, if you know, as an owner, you want to have control over your cafe, that's only natural. But from his perspective and, and what we hear him saying, And what we can be encouraged with if you find yourself in in a position like his is that the benefit of uh, helping people be co-creators with giving them trust and ownership over your company and to to develop things far outweighs the discomfort of uh, not being in complete and utter control, which honestly might just be an illusion anyway. I don't think we're ever really in control. So my thanks to Christian for coming on the show and helping inspire us with his story and his insights as a cafe owner. And uh, good luck to him in opening his second location. If you ever find yourself in Gothenburg, Sweden, swing by and uh, get yourself some coffee alchemy over at El Shemisten and be a co-creator along with them. That's it for today's show. Thank you so much for being a part of this show. Um, and yeah, thank you again, like I said in the beginning, for your input, because that makes you a co-creator also in this podcast, your feedback and participation and listening to the show and sharing it with friends. Um, one thing I noted on a lot of the feedback so far is how did you hear about the podcast is one of the questions and uh, from a friend is by far the number one um, reason why somebody started listening to the show and thank you thank you thank you for that it, it just means so much um, be inspired by this episode i hope it's really made a difference somehow in your career and in your life and as always i hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop <laughs>